Welcome to part three of the <clears throat> OLI short data entry uh, tutorials. Right now we're going to start entering the basic data that we need uh, for our species of silver phosphate that we're going to enter. Okay, so we've previously created our database. Uh, if you've left it open from the previous tutorials, that's fine. If not, we're going to open it here. You can re use the recall list here from the, the menu and there's our database, user1. Or you can use the, the file open button with a little drop down arrow next to it. And this time we'll select user data bank. Now in I'm, my computer, I have quite a few databases already here. But the one that we created previously is user1 and you can use the most recent date for that. When it opens, it's going to uh, open not only the database itself, uh, but the master public database that is associated with this thermodynamic framework. So we have a little bit of work to do before we get started here. Uh, we're going to be entering a new species, and one of the things we need to enter are these material codes, which I'll discuss in a second. But we want to look up those codes for silver phosphate. Now, for this tutorial, we're going to assume that the underlying elements for silver phosphate already exist in the master public data bank, MSC Pub. So we're going to start there first, and we're going to go ahead and open it up. Now, we're not looking at species or anything, but we want to look at as material codes. And we're going to search. Now, I don't remember the code for silver, so I'll just type in AG, which is the, uh, the symbol for silver. It is going to be silver in a plus one oxidation state, so we're going to pick it. Uh, it has a code of 184. If I double click it, it adds it to the uh, list up here in the tree, and we get some more information about it here. I'm leaving it here just for reference. I now need phosphorus, and it's phosphorus in the plus five oxidation state, so I'll click it. I'm really putting it here just so I can remember the numbers. And oxygen in the minus two oxidation state is code 21. So I'm leaving them here just so I have a handy reference for it. Now we're going down to species here in our user database. The first thing I need to do is enter its name. So we're going to enter an OLI tag name. They must all have OLI tag names. So I'm going to put in something that looks like the species of interest, silver phosphate. There are three silvers to every phosphate um, ion. The rules here, and there are several, okay, the most important rule is that all of the letters have to be capitalized. Now, it doesn't. this is not an actual formula, but just a name, okay? and there are also some sub-rules for it. We try to limit all of our tag names to less than 12 characters. Okay? The reason is we are going to internally add some variable extensions to this name. For example, this is actually a solid. So we're going to add the letters PPT to the end of this name. So we're going to have a species called AG3PO4PPT. That's going to be the actual solid name internally in the code. Hydrates will have a dot and a number of waters and the letters H2O after the name to designate them as a hydrate. In addition to that, we have internal variables such as activity coefficients, which are prefixed with the letter A. Uh, concentrations, which are mole fractions, either the letter X for the liquid phase or Y for the vapor phase. We also have equilibrium constants, which are prefixed by the letter K. So all said and done, the maximum number of variable uh, characters names we can have internally is 16 characters. So we try to reduce an overflow by limiting the actual tag name to 12 characters. Here we have a creator. We're just going to put my initials in, Jim Berthold. I don't actually have a good mineral name. Uh, some species, such as calcium carbonate, could also be called calcite. We're going to skip that for now. Not important for this part of the tutorial. It does need a uh, IUPAC name. Now, you notice the fields here that have stars. Those are required. So I'm just going to type in silver phosphate. The component ID number, this is only used in the program uh, manufactured by Honeywell called Unisim Design. It requires a unique code 
for their indexing purposes. OLI doesn't actually use the number, but uh, Unisim Design does. Uh, we have blocked out a range of numbers, 8,001 to 9,000, which will not be used by either the OLI data group or by Honeywell. So we can safely put in this number. And they need to be unique per model. So if you have a different database, make sure those numbers are the same. Or, or not the same, but uh, within this range. The empirical formula, okay, we start off with carbon and hydrogen, and if it's organic molecule, and then oxygen, and then everything else alphabetically. Or if it's a mineral, such as this, or an inorganic species, they're completely alphabetical. So we'll start off with silver, and now we're, you see we're using lowercase. Oxygen is next, and there's four of them. Then phosphorus. The chemical formula is the more common way, AG3, oops, 3, P04. Structural formula is a tag used for the SMILES notation for organics. Uh, we don't have that here. I don't recall the chemistry, uh, chemical abstract service registry number, but not necessary uh, for our work here. The next one is molecular weight. It is required, but we're going to let the program figure this out. And now we're going to come over to material codes. Okay, remember, we have them listed here. So rather than sorting through the list, I'll just type in 184. When I hit the tab key, you see that it updates to silver plus one. It gives its molecular weight. And I have to enter now how many of these 184 codes, or silver, uh, I have in this component. So there are three of them. I'm then going to add uh, the code for phosphorus, which is 27. And there's one of those and the code for oxygen, which is 21. And there are four of them. So you can see that the molecular weight has been updated. Okay, this is a good number. This keeps all of our internal molecular weights for all of our components consistent. OLI is gonna use these codes to close the mass balance around each one of these elements to make sure that we're not accidentally eliminating or creating matter. So we use this number and keeping the molecular weights consistent. If you disagree with OLI's molecular weight for oxygen, for example, that you don't believe it's 15.9994 grams per gram mole, then you would have to create your own material code for oxygen and then enter it here, much like you saw us have up here in these material codes. Now we're almost done uh, with this. And something that is sort of missing on the screen, and it's very, very important, is you need to scroll down to find the word add. This is important. If you don't click add, everything you've done here will be wasted. So I'm going to go ahead and click add. Okay. Okay, so it's actually told me I have an error. That's because I missed the three in my empirical formula. We are using this formula to check to see if our, our molecular weight is correct. I didn't actually intend to do that in this tutorial, but it was good. So I'll go back and add three to the empirical formula. And once again, we will go back and you see that it's been added. We are then going to save our database. You see the little star here? It means that it's been a new component and needs to be saved. So we'll click the old save button up here it goes away. Everything has been saved. There's a couple other things we could do on this screen. We can move the windows around a little bit to give us more information. If we were to add a number, such as the chemical abstract service number, uh, that button will then uh, be indicated with a star. At this point, we are going to close uh, the program by clicking Exit just as a test to make sure that it's saved, uh, I am going to restart the program. And there it is again. Uh, I'm going to go directly to the recall list and go into species. And you can see that our species is actually there. Okay. Double click it to activate it. And we'll be coming back to this in the next video. And we're all set and ready to go. Uh, I've made no changes here, so you can go ahead and click X and complete the uh, tutorial. Thank you.